Hi, Micro Hunter here, and today I want to uh, respond uh, to another question which I received. Uh, I'm studying biotechnology, so I think I'm going to need a phase or a DIC, uh, re referring to phase contrast or DIC uh, microscope. Which one do you think is the best choice for biotechnology? So first of all, thank you very much for this question. I will give you an answer to this, uh, but you have to allow me to... Um, yeah, tell you a personal story first, which kind of relates a little bit <clears throat> to that topic. I remember it was back in the year 1992. I just uh, started to study microbiology and after one of the lessons, I think it was a genetics lesson, after one of those lessons I went up uh, to the professor who just had the lecture and I asked him exactly the same question. I said, you see, I'm studying microbiology now, um, which microscope should I buy? And uh, I have to admit that I received the most disappointing answer that I ever received. Um, I expected that he's going to be very enthusiastic about the whole thing and then he's going to give me a specific recommendation. Uh, not at all. Um, what did he say? Very disappointingly for me, he said, he looked at me and he says, you don't need a microscope. He said, uh, save the money and use that money to go skiing. I almost couldn't believe my ears when I heard that. Essentially, he said, in other words, it's a waste of time. Go on a holiday with the money, you'd be better off. And I remember that I was quite disappointed by that response. Um, and uh, however, a few years, um, it took a few years, and then I actually understood um, what he actually meant with that. And um, I'm going to explain this to you now uh, because uh, I want to give you a little bit uh, less disappointing and a more, yeah, a more productive answer than what I received from my professor. Um, it's like this, that indeed, uh, if you are studying microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry, genetics, molecular biology, it doesn't matter. Um, chances are pretty good that you will not uh, use microscopes very much during your university study, even um, if you're doing research. And the reason is, is that, uh, um, interestingly, uh, many of the research that is done uh, nowadays is actually moving away from an observation um, towards uh, more towards chemical analysis. Now, Yes, there are certain research projects where microscopes do play a very important role. I'm not uh, questioning this. Um, and in this case, often you use fluorescence microscopes uh, where you're labeling certain proteins in a cell with a fluorescent uh, antibody. And then you're using UV light from the microscope to actually make those uh, molecules light up. Very specific techniques, okay? So yes, there are uh, microscopes used in, um, in research, of course, a, a lot. Uh, but often the applications are very, very specific. And it is like this that uh, the issue is, is that in recent years, even um, if you're studying botanics, which is the study of plants or zoology, even then, depending on the research project, exceptions do exist, but even then, often microscopes are not as commonly used. I will never forget uh, this one excursion to the Botanical Institute that I did when I was still a very young student. Um, I did an uh, excursion there. I thought that the Botanical Institute, they study plants. Of course they do that. But what did they do when I talked to this one PhD student? Well, she was actually analyzing uh, uh, so-called transposons, which are jumping DNA sequences of a plant DNA. So even when they were when you're doing botanics, even then uh, the analysis and the investigations was very very biochemical and genetic in nature. I'm not saying that this is always the case, uh, but at least um, in those cases that I've uh, basically when I've talked with people, this was always the case. Microscopes unfortunately did not play um, a very important role. So uh, what does this mean? This basically means that uh, chances are pretty good. Uh, that when you are studying um, biotechnology at university and when you are re doing a research project, then it is the task of the university to pro provide you with the appropriate equipment. And then you will use the university or the college laboratory to actually do your, the research if you're working, for example, on a thesis, okay, on your bachelor's or master's thesis or PhD thesis, then they will uh, provide a laboratory uh, for you with all of the equipment. And then I tell you, probably the microscope is only one of many uh, devices that you're going to be using there. 
Um, I studied microbiology, but uh, used microscopes very, very rarely, actually. Uh, we only did it for a quick quality check to see if the sample was contaminated with other bacteria or not. Uh, but most of the time, I actually used the so-called gas chromatograph, uh, which uh, did uh, it was analytical chemistry, actually. Yeah. Um, so this is basically answer number one, is, is that uh, chances are pretty good you won't need it because the university or college will provide the equipment. And number two, the second reason why you won't need it is, is because um, yeah, biotechnology, molecular biology and all of those biosciences nowadays um, are really not based so much on observation through a microscope. Um, you'll, I tell you, most likely you're going to be analyzing um, biochemical pathways and you'll be studying biochemical pathways. You'll do uh, genetic engineering probably to optimize, uh, I don't know, uh, some aspect in yeast or E. coli. Um, maybe you'll be designing or improving a reaction fermenter to increase the alcohol production of a certain yeast strain that you're using, whatever. Um, but often it's like this, that microscopes are not that commonly used. Yeah, uh, maybe to do a cell count to see how high is the yeast density of your fermentation. Maybe that could be done. But for that, you probably don't need phase contrast or differential interference contrast (DIC). Okay, so that is a little bit one of the thing uh, the things um, that um, yeah we've seen a li little bit in in the last uh, I don't know 50, 80, 100 years. This is we're moving away um, from doing science which is observation based uh, towards science which is more. Yeah, which uses other methods um, of analysis, okay? Um, I have to admit now, I'm getting a little bit personal. Uh, I realized this a few years after I actually started to study microbiology, and this, I uh, have to admit, disappointed me a little bit, because I started to study biology because I had a certain love love of nature, lo okay? And then all of a sudden I realized that uh, the study that I chose, um, yeah, I liked it, it was very interesting, but actually... It was very, hmm, very technical, very theoretical, very biochemical. And uh, this is something that I feel that has been lost a little bit um, because I started to study at university with a somewhat a naive idea um, of, 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 of this naive romanticized 19th century science idea. You have a scientist with his microscope sitting in a room discovering something and becoming famous because of seeing for the first time a certain organism. This was kind of my romanticized idea that I still had in my head um, and this is not the case anymore unfortunately or often it's not the case. Huh? Um, this has been lost a little bit um, in many cases. Now I know that there are certain research projects that still are very much observation based um, and uh, yeah I really think that this is really great and uh, they use microscopes a lot I don't know maybe if you're doing some kind of a biodiversity study of insects you could probably gonna use uh, stereo microscopes on an everyday basis or if you're analyzing for a minifera which are can be found in, in, in sand uh, those little uh, shells well yeah I'm quite certain that you will use microscopes a lot but on the large scale, I feel, unfortunately, um, modern biosciences are moving a little bit into a different direction. Okay, and now to come back to your, uh, to your question. And precisely because of that, you should buy yourself a microscope, okay? Because this way, you kind of recapture a little bit of this lost tradition, okay, of this lost, uh, yeah, um, fascination maybe of, of nature, of the love of nature, okay. This has all been lost a little bit and um, if you now, um, yeah, complement your university or college studies by kind of, yeah, using microscopes on uh, as a hobby basis for, am for amateur observation, I think then this kind of recaptures a little bit some of this lost, um, yeah, lost, uh, feeling of exploration I would say okay so that is basically the 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 reason buy yourself a microscope uh, if you're studying biotechnology not because you need it okay because chances are pretty good that you won't need them um, you won't need it at home but buy yourself one because most likely you will not be using microscopes very much during your university studies okay so this is uh, basically the recommendation and now I still know this is does not answer your question because you want to know should you get yourself a phase or a DIC microscope 
Um, and for those of you who do not know the difference, these are kind of specialized uh, uh, microscopes which allow you to see very fine structures which are transparent, okay? Um, so they basically allow you to see uh, transparent structures much better. Um, and the answer is the following. If you go to a company and ask for phase contrast or DIC, then most likely the answer will be already be given to you simply when they tell you the cost of these devices. Generally, DIC, I mean, I didn't look it up, but I would be surprised if it would cost less than several thousand euros or several thousand dollars. Okay, so for amateur use, um, you 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 gotta be yeah, you you gotta have a thick wallet for that. Okay, phase contrast is a little bit cheaper, but also not so easy to get. You have to either buy this equipment secondhand, like I did here. Okay, that's a phase contrast microscope which I assembled together from used parts that I bought over eBay. Um, so the price was reasonable. Um, but if you wanna buy this new, you're also yeah, it's also gonna be quite costly, and you have to talk to to uh, yeah, brand microscope manufacturers who offer these microscopes. Generally, you will not find this uh, in the low-end educational um, sector, okay? So that is one thing. Um, if you can afford it, um, buy whatever your wallet uh, allows you to, to afford, um, because it will be then for hobby reasons and for amateur reasons. Um, if I had the choice between DIC and phase contrast, I would definitely go for DIC. Uh, the reason is, is because um, I myself, I like to observe water samples, and it is like this that DIC um, allows you to see unstained samples better, but it does not introduce so many optical artifacts, okay? So it gives you a more natural picture. So that would that's why I would like, uh, I probably would go for DIC if I had the choice. Fact is, I cannot afford it. Okay, that's a different on a different uh, level. So on the other hand, um, if it's not phase contrast or DIC, then get yourself a simple bright field microscope with a decent condenser, a condenser that allows you also to attach a so-called dark field patch stop like this here, um, and then you'll also be fine. Um, and uh, my advice is also, if you're serious about uh, amateur microscopy, um, then also get yourself one where you can take pictures so with a photo tube like, uh, like they have here, okay? Um, I think uh, the ability to take pictures is a very important important uh, thing if you're uh, because uh, it allows you much easier to document the things that you're actually observing um, if you don't have a photo tube then you can still always take uh, pictures through the directly through the eyepiece using a pocket camera or mobile phone this also works so basically you're not excluded from taking pictures if you don't have a photo tube but it's simply much more convenient um, if you um, yeah if you have it and also if you really want to do a lot of microscopy I also definitely recommend that you use uh, get a microscope with uh, 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 basically, um, yeah, uh, a binocular one because when you when you're sitting a long time behind the microscope, it's simply more convenient and more comfortable. Okay. Um, otherwise, get yourself a bright field microscope uh, with achromatic uh, objectives, um, four times, ten times, forty times at least. Um, I personally also have a 20 times objective here because 20 times is very good for observing water samples. If you want to uh, observe yeast cells, and often in biotechnology you observe yeast cells because you're into brewing, alcoholic fermentation, you use yeast, uh, then basically you can already see these cells uh, with a total magnification of 100 times very easily, 400 times of course as well. Um, and if you want to determine the cell count or the cell density, then you also need a, a special slide called a hemocytometer. They do not cost very much. And then you can actually also determine the, the cell count. And I'm saying this because I know that some people who are doing a brew, who are brewing their own beverages um, using yeast, sometimes they will do a quality check uh, by doing a cell count and then they also use microscopes, of course. But you do not need phase contrast or DIC or anything fancy or for that, okay? You can use regular bright field optics uh, for doing a cell count. So. Yes, I think this uh, yeah was a very yeah a deviating answer. Was sidetracking a lot, um, and uh, I simply want to uh, to summarize my main points. Um, I would say the type of microscope that you should get or that you want to get depends very much not on what you study, uh, but actually on the specific research interests that you have. Um, and you cannot simply say that for the field of microbiology, you need this type of microscope or for genetics, you need another one or for bi biotechnology, a third one. It doesn't work like this uh, because you need, um, for the specific research question, you need specifically equipped microscopes. I assume uh, that, or I assumed that you wanted to use, or 
run it by a microscope, not uh, because you actually have a specific research goal, but because you're interested in, in using it as for amateur reasons to kind of complement your university studies for this. And for this reason, I would say uh, you want to stay general purpose and therefore go with a decent, good, bright field microscope. Um, if you do not have the money at all, if you really are low on money, which I think you might not be because you actually have highly, uh, yeah, your requirements are quite high. But if you have really low, uh, a very thin wallet, yeah, you can buy microscopes already um, for less than a hundred euros, less than a hundred dollars. Um, and uh, basically with these, you can also see quite a lot and you can have a lot of fun with them as well. Okay, I wish you all the best. Uh, and uh, leave comments um, if you have any yeah, comments uh, to make. Uh, all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.